And so a lot of kids perceive things that are incorrect. Like, for example, a parent, you know, your parents could ha be having the fight and the kid could be in the room and the child thinks, oh, that was my fault that they fought and it had nothing to do with you. I mean, how many times have we seen and heard that? And we've seen that in counseling so often where they have just perceived something. How many times have we perceived something that we thought even people were talking about us or people were looking at us in a funny way and you're thinking, I know they don't like me. I can see the way they looked at me. And I can see what they're, they're, see, they're looking at me with a dirty look. And meanwhile, they can't see. And they're trying to see something and they're looking this way. But you're thinking that they're looking at you with a, you know, funky look. I've done it. <laughs> so I know from experience, like, what are they looking at? And then you get an attitude about it. <laughs> so rejection causes emotional wounds. All right. And so if it's not cleansed and released, if we don't address it, we'll grow into an individual. We'll grow into something that God didn't create. We'll have an emotion. We'll have a personality that that's not who we are. So these spiritual wounds can open us up to spirits of rejection that you need deliverance. And it's such a shame, too, that the church at large, most, a lot of churches have denied this. And so many people have struggled with different areas in their lives, and they have not lived a victorious life. And the goal of the enemy is to cause us to, to live with emotional baggage. And Jesus, if the Bible says Jesus came to set the captives free, then he came to set us free. Amen? So rejection has a lot of fruit. So on your handout, I have this. So rebellion happens in both children and adults. What are some of the different ways, you know, that, that rejection can enter in? Um, you know, a parent could be uh, disappointed in the baby's sex. And, um, you know, the, the babies feel a lot of stuff in the womb. I mean, my mom, she, she meant the, I mean, my mother was good to me, but my mom wanted me to be a boy. And she, how many times on my birthday I'd hear, you know, uh, my mother was from Italy. And she would say, you know, uh, I was so upset when you were born, you know, because, huh? She, my mother cried. And she told the doctor, he can have me because it wa I wasn't a boy. And then she said, but then when your father saw you, he loved you. You know, you were, he said, you were a beautiful baby, so we can keep you. Now, okay. Now, I understand, and I know my mom loved me, but as a kid growing up hearing this for my birthday each year, how do you think it made me feel? I didn't feel real good about myself. And I would get really angry about that and felt so reject it and like oh my gosh you know the poor i felt bad that my father didn't have a boy that 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 you know so i try to be that boy you know i try to be mechanical i try i wanted to be for him what you know i really wasn't so you have uh, people being bullied in school right you have boarding school issues you know we've dealt with people here who kids have gone to boarding school and even though the parents meant well wa wanted their kids to have an exceptional you know, education, there was a boarding school. I mean, they were away. They were isolated from their family. So you have, uh, you know, people being treated unfairly. You have uh, overly um, controlling parents or where they're so strict, not giving the kid, you know, breathing room. Alcoholism. And let me just say this. This isn't to put anybody down. If maybe you've done it or you've experienced it. Remember, everybody did, you know, they did the best that they could with whatever they had. You know, I was thinking of stuff today and I thought, oh God, I have to call my kids and repent as I was rereading some of these things, you know. You thought you were doing... Oh, okay, tell them I'm sorry. No. <laughs> so alcoholism in the home, poverty, when you have parents that are alcoholics and you have to walk on eggshells. You don't know each day whether you're coming or going. You're so afraid. Um, when you're in, impoverished, when there's poverty, and then the kids are going to school and, and they don't have proper clothing or they don't have the latest, uh, you know, sneakers or their, their cell phone, and they're really embarrassed by that, right? Yeah. All right, so um, the tendency to reject others. So a lot of times what happens is you'll reject others before they reject you. And so you can act all snotty with them or, or you have a very, you know, standoffish personality. Why? It's not that you really want to do that. You're, in, you're, you're, you're protecting yourself. You're seeing God is saying, no, this isn't how I created my people. I want you to have joy. I want you to have relationship with people. I want you to interact with people. So there's a tendency to always wonder, will they like me? 
You know, there's a tendency to that performance thing. We teach that in Elijah House. I was the poster child for performance orientation. If it wasn't perfect, and, and guess what? It was never perfect, even though you try to make everything perfect. And, oh, my Lord, that, that was there a lot of pressure, unnecessary pressure. And um, there were times that, I mean, I wouldn't even invite I was so I struggled so much with this. I was so embarrassed to invite people to my house, not because anything was wrong at my home. I was uh, I couldn't handle them saying no. They couldn't come because I took it as rejection. Wow. Thank you, babysitters. I couldn't even ask them because if they said no, I took it personal. Not not that they may have plans, but I took it personal that they didn't want to be with us. And then if I was going to invite anybody over, I always had to have another couple so that the couple will enjoy being with the other people instead of us. I'm, I have come a long way, baby. (laughs) No, but I'm serious. Then the one time I was trying to make everything so perfect and I stuffed everything in this one closet and we're all sitting there around the table and ready. You want everything perfect and that you just have it so together. And as we're talking, I hear in the closet, boom, and everything that I stuffed in the closet came out of the closet. The door came flying open and I'm like, oh, Jesus. So no matter what I tried to do, you know, that the Lord's like, girl, you're going to get free from this thing, you know? And I was devastated, but now I would have been like, well, come on, Marion, come and clean my house. I don't care. <laughs> I've come a long way, baby. Don't let her come to your house because she will critique it. But I'm like, <laughs> anyway, so in love, in love, in love. So, you know, you know, and then you have a tendency to have self-pity and you get into that place where everything, woe is me. Oh, when it comes to me, they're not going to like me. Oh my gosh, no matter what I do, I can't succeed. And, you know, you feel all alone, but it's really real when you're going through it. You know, I mean, I, you know, I'm laughing now, but when, when those things happen, you're dead. I remember another time we invited these ministers over to our house and, and I was cooking this chicken and I accidentally, I was supposed to put paprika on the chicken and it was cinnamon. <laughs> I was so upset. I mean, no matter the more I tried, the worse it was. So anyway, so I had to really get over this thing. I thought, Lord. And then when the, one of the couple of the first times I was asked to preach, I, pre, I had a message prepared for really, it was like 12 weeks worth of information that I tried to get in 45 minutes. And then I would ask my husband, was it okay? If he said it wasn't, he was in trouble. And if he said it was okay, he still got in trouble because I didn't believe him. So, you know, so it creates a lot of havoc and it it causes a lot of strife in the home. (laughs) Right? I did really, I did. I spoke real. And I, this is, this is without drugs. I mean, the old me, that was drugs. You know, I could have used something there. I'm set free now. I mean, I haven't done that. Anyway. (laughs) Woo, Jesus. Anyway.